record? All right, when you're ready, start with bridge pose. <laughs> and we'll start with the feet on the floor and curl up. So we're gonna do bridge and lift. And we're gonna to try to articulate a word at a time and let the breath dictate your pace. So you can breathe in through your nose. And we're gonna do three more together before we hold a high place. There you go. Big cap and then hold your place and just notice around hips level. And if they're level and you would like to add on, lift up your right leg, and we're gonna drop the hips and lift up and down with only one leg ten times. And keep pointing through that foot. And now let that foot down, level your hips, and lift your other leg and drop up and down 10 times. Your goal is to keep your pelvis level and keep your waist long between the pelvis and the lowest rib. Now we're gonna let that foot down, take an inhale. You're gonna lower your spine a vertebra at a time. Take your hands to your feet, happy day. Knees like, hi hey, Michelle, hi everybody. Now this is a stretch for the hamstrings and the glutes. Now bring your hands behind your head and your legs in a table. Now rotate your torso as you take your shoulder or elbow towards your opposite knee. Hi Michelle, good, someday. And then rotate, hi everybody, and then rotate. Now keep going with a point. And as you're ready, flex your foot and do 10 more with a flexed foot. Watch your belly pull in, and that'll help protect your back. And take two more. Now rest your head and pull your legs in. Lift up your right leg and then take your left leg a few inches off the floor. And then switch as if you're a pair of scissors. You can point on this set. Good, belly in. And now flex on this set. Good. All right, try six more. Good, I like that, Catherine. One hand behind your head or two is a nice modification. Recover for a moment. Now place your feet back on the floor and put your right ankle on your left thigh. You're gonna lift your hips with this figure four. Try to keep the hips level, that's your goal. We're trying to engage, engage this loop. Five, four, so you can put your attention there. Now switch your leg. The ankle foot comes down, left ankle to the right thigh. Drop down and up. Ten, nine, eight. Good. All four corners of your foot are pressing into the floor. Now let that foot down. Now hold here and then just hold for five. Four, three, two, lower your spine and then hug your legs into your belly. And you can point and flex your feet. You can add an ankle roll, toe spread. And for this abdominal uh, supine abs, we're gonna put our hands behind our head. Now lift up your torso, shoulder blades off the mat, elbows touch the knees, and then stretch your legs long and your elbows out to the side. Touch your knees with your elbows and extend. Touch your knees with your elbows and extend. This is called double leg stretch. You want to feel your belly pull in every exhale. And you want to keep your ribs connected to the mat. And we're going to do four more. Three, two, and recover. The head comes down. The hands can hold on to the leg and you can rock right and left. Now both legs are going to come up, both hands are going to come beside your hips as if you're framing your pelvis. Now pretend there's a clock on the side and you want to trace it with your feet glued. Now go the other way, so one way clockwise, when you get to 12 o'clock, which is roughly vertical, go the other way. The bigger the circle, the harder it is to maintain ribs on the mat, so that'll be your litmus, how far your, how big your circle is. Now glue the legs together like there's a ribbon between your inner thighs. 
between your legs, engage your inner thighs. We're going to do one more each way. So one more clockwise and one more counterclockwise. Now this time, take your hands between your knees and hold on to your feet. You're in a bound angle, so your inner thighs are stretching. You might even use your elbows to press your inner thighs a little wider. And this time, let your left leg down. Take your right leg up, and you're going to draw, this is leg circles, draw a circle with only one leg up in the air. Your goal is to keep your ribs down. So that's how you know how big or little to make the circle. If your hamstring feels tight, just bend the knee a little bit or bend the left knee a little. And yeah, there you go. And if, if it warms up, you could lengthen that leg that was the cap. Go the other way, 10. And if you hear any clicking, decrease that range of motion so you don't hear any clicking. Four, three, two, good. Now, before we add on the other leg, just hang, hold that leg in the air and point and flex and point and flex and point and flex. So what you're doing is flossing that nerve, stretching. Now we're gonna take that leg down to the mat, lift your other leg up, and you're gonna draw circles on the ceiling. And if it's hard and your hamstrings tight, bend one or both knees. And your ribs stay down. Good, nine. When you're at 10 this way, switch directions. One and two. The other leg tries to get closer to the ground as your hip flexor warms up and stretches, as your hamstring stretches. Good, ribs are down. And see if your right shoulder will relax there. It looks a little tense up. Yeah, there we go. Now hug that leg up and point and flex and point and flex and point and flex. And five, four. Our focus is on the top ankle, but it's okay if the bottom one pairs sympathetically. Flex is important. Now pull both legs in and take a breather. Now put both feet down. This is going to be leg pull bridge, so curl up into a bridge. Now once you're up, lift up your right leg and then it's going to all by itself lower towards the floor and lift. You're going to keep the right knee long and you're going to point and flex while you maintain level hips, while you keep breathing with your movement. Now that foot is going to go to the floor. Switch up your legs and point, flex, inhale and exhale. Good, breathe in, breathe out. Keep the hips level best you can. Now let that left foot down, inhale, stay up in a bridge. Our, our off, options are pulses. So take 10 little pulses here. Breathing still. Let the knees touch. And now it's internal rotation. Ten little pulses here. Now let the knees open wider than your heels. Just a couple inches wider. Now up and down ten pulses. Put the knees on top of the heels. You're in neutral. Lift up the right leg. Pull your right leg's toes back. Do ten little pulses with the left foot pushing. Up, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Put the right foot down. Now put the left leg up, pull those left toes back, and do 10 little pulses here, up and down. 10, three, six. Lower that foot. Lower your hips. And hug your legs in. Now rock a little bit right and left. Right and left. Breathe in. And then pop yourself up to your right arm, and it's going to be like a little forearm balance. The modification would be to lie down, but otherwise take that leg and draw circles. I'd say uh, like a fit ball. Six, 
keep your weights lifted. Seven, keep pointing. Good. Now flex that top foot and go the other way. Ten. Lifting, that's the hard part, I think. Now this arm that's holding you up is going to act like a pillow to keep your neck safe. Take the top leg forward just out of the way. Lift up your bottom leg and point and take 10 circles. Flex your foot and go the other way. It won't be as big, but maybe you could try for a cantaloupe size. Now we're going to take this to the other side. Take your elbow and prop yourself up for that first one. Draw a circle with pointed toes. Some of the circle goes ahead of your leg. Some of it goes behind. Long knee. Flex your foot. Breathe in. Stay lifted in the ribs. Building bone density and hip abductors. Okay, this arm, this arm that's holding you up, it goes down. It's a pillow. You may even use a pillow. Top leg forward, lift up your bottom leg and point and draw circles. Go backwards and flex. Really good job. And then we're going to take a belly down posture. So this is going to be swan. Let your belly, uh, this is also called prone, let your belly be down. And option one is forearms. So this is also space. You lift your belly and you don't over grip your glutes. Now either do that or put your hands on the floor and press up higher. Neck is soft. Breathe in. We're holding, we're breathing. Now lower, and we're gonna do those two more times. Now you can come up to a forearm sphinx, just like this, or your hands, more like this one, elbows point down if you're doing that one. Breathe in. Good, everybody looks good. The shoulders slip down the back. That looks great. Breathe in. This is so good posture work. Exhale, lower. Now, I'm going to offer a reprieve pose. This is where you just bend the knees and windulate them. It's not really a formal exercise. It's just a release of tension. And then we're going to do another one. So one more sphinx of cobra. Legs long. Lift up your upper back, either on your forearms or on your Hands and hold. Neck is easy. Yep. Nine, eight, five, three. And then lower. Now let your arms actually be a pillow for you. Take your right leg up and lower. Take your left leg up and lower. Now just keep doing this, but try to relax your neck. While you do this, your pelvis is level. And if you want to add on, lift up both legs and add a fast flutter vertical kick, about 20. Lower and next move, lift up both legs and tap the feet while the knees are off the floor. The legs are fairly long. I do have a soft knee though. Um, yep, and then just tap them together. Hit the feet together in the air. About 20, so try five more. And then a child pose, but if you prefer a puppy dog pose with the glutes in the air, you can. I like to add a toe curl under here, like you're, you're trying to stretch your feet if you would like for your toes under and push into the floor. Now we're going to take a downward dog and you're going to stretch out your fingers and then push your hips up. Now bend one knee and bend the other, so feel like Calves and hamstring are getting a stretch. Now both heels lift and lower. And then leave the heels down. Lift your heels, articulate through your spine, and go into up dog. 
Breathe in and then tuck your chin. Press up and back, heels together towards the floor. Lift up. Articulate through your low back, middle back, upper back, up dog. Now, if at any time you need a breather, you can do cat cow. Good, Catherine. And then just go back. You're kind of just going to your breathing pattern. You're trying to articulate your spine. Exhale. And two more. Inhale. And exhale. And then child pose. Rest your hips. And grab a sip, my water's right behind the screen. Grab a sip. And then meet me seated. Mm. Your arms stretch out. Your upper arm goes over your ear. Your bottom arm might go to the floor. And we're going to do this six times. Dynamic landing. One more each. Now hold this side and breathe and stretch and make your nuances. Ten. You can do all these little rotations to find out what you need. Go up and over to the other side and add these little rotations. Breathe into the rib cage that's up. And then up. Now the next one is reverse table or reverse plank. And so reverse table looks like this. Reverse plank looks like this. 10, 9, 8, 3, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, have a seat. Now let your hands go together and massage them. Five circles about each way. And then you can do this do more. I'm just giving a rough answer. And then take your feet a little wider than your shoulders. This is the song. You can rotate first and then take your right pinky to your left foot or pinky toe. Come up and then you rotate first and then take your pinky to pinky. Come up, rotate first and pinky to pinky. Rotate. Rotate. Rotate, rotate one more, and rotate. Nice. Now, any way you want to sit, go into a hold. So you're still rotating. I just wanted to change my legs. So I sit up more upright when I'm cross legged versus hamstrings up. So hold 10. Open up your arms, face center, exhale, rotate. Let your inhale lengthen you. Let your exhale rotate you. Now, bring it to the front. Uh, let's grab one more set here. And then I'll let you decide, would you like to do 10 tricep dips at a reverse table or do a bound angle? You can choose. And the reason I give an option is that's really just hard on your shoulders or your wrist. But the goal is something is good for you, right? So if you're, when you're ready, lift up your hips, and maybe that's your pose too as an option, but if you'd like to add on, bend your knees, or sorry, bend your elbows, and then lift your hips. Bend your elbows, straighten your elbows and lift. Bend, lift, bend, lift, good. Bend, lift, bend, 
left, eight, nine, ten, and then lower your hips. Now we're going to do a stretch, hand forward, pull the fingers way under, drop both shoulders, breathe in, it should feel like the top of your forearm. We're going to do the other one, drop your forearm, and then or pull the fingers under, drop your shoulders. Yep. This is a great chance to check your neck. Now we're going to do the other side, pull your fingers under. Notice we've been doing a lot of hand stretches the last six months or so. Um, I kept hearing from you guys you like them, so let's just keep them up. They work so hard for us anyway, so stick the other one in. Breathe in. Now we're going to grab water. We're getting ready to do some planks, so I want you to be hydrated before then, and if you finish before I do, you're going to do a forearm plank bracing the floor. And we're going to hold a 10 count. And so get ready. Elbows down underneath your shoulder, curl your toes, and hold 10, 9, 8. Get ready, turn sideways. Now one elbow is underneath you. You got it, Michelle. Ten. Now we're going to go to the other side. I'm just going to face you. You're welcome to flip if that's easier for your space. Ten. Good. That is in line with that back. All right. Inhale. And lower down. Now back to the forearm plank. We're going to do an uh, add-on of a dolphin and then a plank. So your plank is pretty parallel to the floor. Your dolphin is hips up like an upside down V. Then you go back to plank. Then you go up to dolphin. Go back to plank. Dolphin. Plank. Dolphin. Plank. Dolphin. Plank. Dolphin. Rest your pelvis. This is Sphinx. And then if you want to add on, Cobra. Breathe in. Now we're going to do a side plank. And on this one, we're going to take a uh, rotation. So it's also called thread the needle. Come up and rotate your upper body, your torso. Your, your arm goes through this window you've created with the floor. And your rib cage, your hips, they stay steady, they stay pointing forward. If your hips were headlights, they would flash forward the whole time. Your neck is probably just going along for the ride. It's not hurting. You're mindful of it. Lower your hip bones. We're going to do tail on the other side. Now your elbow is underneath your shoulder. First, your shoulders down the back. When you feel like you're in a good static plank, then you're fine to add on. Mobility, movement, dynamic. Neck is easy. It's not strained at all. And lower. Nice. Grab a sip. We're going to do a bound angle pose, which is feet soles together. Let's shoot for eight to 12 ounces today, huh? And put your feet soles together. Put your elbows, if, if this feels good, you can put your forearms or elbows on the, on the inner thigh. Come back up when you're ready. Now, if you would like to add on a balance, just lift your feet. If you don't want to, just stay in bell angle. 
If you'd like to add on a little longer lever, you can open up the feet. You can hold up to the ankles or you can hold up to the toes. Good job. Look how the shoulders are done. See if you could pull it closer together and hamstrings. So any out three times. Inhale as an option, a bonus. Breathe in, you're doing great. Inhale. Now without losing your balance, bend the knees. Woo, good job. And then take the feet down. Now we're gonna do a roll back, so just make sure you have enough room. And you're going to, let me tilt this a little bit. So it's, yeah. Okay, take your slow roll, which I'm gonna say 10 seconds. One, we're gonna be doing something with this. Four, eight. Now, when you're down, inhale, arms long. The option here is to exhale and come up. Five, four, three, two, one, and roll down. Five, four, three, two, one, arms back. Exhale, roll up or do 30 degrees only as a modification or hold your hands on your thighs. Roll down or just do this partial roll down. Five, four, three, two arms long. Two more of those if you're doing this option. Exhale, heel over, heel down. Five, let's do one more. Inhale. And exhale, peel up, chin tucks, go up and over. Now, I don't want it to be a uh, uh, too intense stretch, but just reach forward and see if you can enjoy a hamstring stretch for 10. Whatever you can grab, good, Karen, doesn't matter, just your shins, oh, there's your toes, good. Relax your neck. Now, peel up, place your forearms on the mat behind you, but still lift up through your chest. And when you lift your toes, you're now in your you're now in the beginning of a pose. We're going to do a press in and out. And then if you'd like to add on can can, you go to one corner a little bit. It doesn't even have to be big. Go to the other corner. The longer your lever, the longer you straighten your knees, harder. So the modifications are: don't bend your knees so much, or don't straighten so much. So like here's a little one. That's big can can. That would do. But whatever you're doing, we'll do four more. Three belly pulls in. Two. One. Now let your feet down and let your body down. Take your right ankle to the thigh. Reach your hands through. And you might even rock here. You might even move your ankles here. Ten more. Now take that ankle to your thigh, reach your hands through the window. Breathe in, and now when you're ready, put your feet in the air, and pretend that you're bicycling. Now, this is the beginning one. If you want one more challenge, take your bicycle a little further away from you, and it may be even bigger. If you would like another challenge, let your body, your torso, bicycle up with you. If you want one more challenge, cross your arms. We're going to do five more of whatever you're doing. We're going to meet seated. Four. Three, two, and one. Meet me seated. Really good. Grab a sip. And the next one is going to be 10 push ups. Now you can do 10 push ups on the wall. 
You can do them in a square position, like a box, or on your flesh of your um, knees and yeah. your knees. You could also do them on your toes. So it's okay, because the main thing is, I just want your shoulder blades down the back. Just feel like you're working your triceps here. Good, guys. Breathing also. You can always change. You can always go to your knees. You always go to the wall. I want you to feel your abs. When you do a good push-up, you feel your abs. When you're ready, take either a child's pose or interlace your fingers at the low back and lift your arms. It's whenever you need to rest. Good, five. Good. There's that shoulder. All right. Grab a sit. We're going to go back to some planks now. So we're going to be doing a forearm plank facing the floor. Your elbows are down. And there's a possible add on where you shift forward and back. So that's your option. You're going to be in a forearm plank. Now, if you're adding on, point to your toes and then drop through your heels 10 times. I personally like the foot stretch on that one. <sighs> okay. Now, take it to a side plank. We're going to do a paint the sky. So let your hand be at your thigh. Go up and over. You might even try to touch the floor. Your hips drop, but they don't go to the floor in between repetitions. They drop and they lift. Breathe in and out. Beautiful. And think about a long arm. It's really long because you're stretching as well. We're trying to do a few things. Stretch and strengthen at the same time. Hip mobility in our joints. Now this one's going to be 10. Your hand can start on your hip. Watch your space. Go up and over. You might even touch towards the floor. And check your neck. It looks good to me. Everybody looks good, but you always want to just make sure. Good. And then recover. Nice job. Let's go to the belly. And uh, I also call this dynamic swan. It's kind of like swan rocking, but we're going to do it slowly. And you're going to push up. Then your hands might help you. Then you're going to lower your torso and then you're going to lift your legs. Your legs will go down. Your upper back will start to lift. Your hands can help you. Oh, gee, really good. And then legs, upper body, lower, legs, upper body, lower, legs. Upper body, leg, and about two more, and I say about because your breathing pattern will dictate your speed. About one more full one. Leave your upper body up again, and about 10 counts here. Your neck is clean, easy, free. Inhale. Now, everybody looks so good. I love it. All right, come down. Put your hands beside your hips, thigh, uh, beside your thighs. Your hands are facing the floor. There you go, Kathy. Lift up your back. Lift up your legs and breathe. Now, probably just your belly and your pelvis is on the floor. But if you need a modification, touch the toes to the floor. Relax for a moment. If you can reach your um, hands together, interlace them at the low back, do. But if you cannot, just put one on the other or leave your hands beside your hips. Go up with your upper back. Go up with your arms. Go up with your legs. Breathe in. Now feel that beautiful shoulder stretch. Lower for a moment and switch whichever way your hands are. Come up, breathe. And 
and then recover child's pose. You can um, pat yourself on the back in this one. I'm gonna grab more water too, so grab some if you want. And then lie down on your side. Now, when you're on your side, your arm is gonna be your pillow, but you're also welcome to use a pillow. Take both legs. I like to put a hand on my belly to, to have a proprioceptive feedback loop. Lift up and you feel right here, these obliques do well. You feel your hip and your inner thigh, but you don't feel your neck. Now we're doing uh, 10 more, 20 total. This is a modification, little two keys on the floor, but yeah, just relax up there. I also like to relax my eyes and my jaw, those muscles that tend to help that don't really need to pretend to help. Stay up as an add-on, top leg up. Toes forward, there's your glute, your hip abductor, there's your inner thigh. Now leave that top leg up and take the bottom leg to it. Good. Now, what we'll do before we go to the other side is rest on your belly, lift up your legs, and tap the feet together 20 times in the air while you uh, work your hamstrings and your adductors. About 10 more. And then let's roll over to the other side. Let your arm be your pillow. Take both legs up. Again, you can do your weeks here. Hand on the belly. Now stay up and see if you can keep both legs up, top leg higher, belly in, the bottom leg's off the mat, you can see your toes and your peripheral, your feet are not drifting behind you, now the bottom leg goes up and down, try to keep the top leg stable, neck easy, and then relax on your back side. Now, leave your left leg down and put your right knee over, and you can put your left hand on that knee or thigh, so it's a little assist. Right arm out like a T. We're taking a back stretch, shoulder and hip. This one feels amazing today. Breathe in, and we're gonna to go to the other side. Take one leg long, and take the other knee down, and hold that hip opener. Getting into the stretch. And then bring it back. And then hug both legs in. You can move your ankles. And then take it to your side, but rest on your arm. Now, this leg is going to draw a line up your leg. It's called developé or passe. And go up and come down. And then go point. You can point. You can flex. Inhale. Stretch. So right here, there should be a little good, a good stretch. Four, five, six, seven, 
Now I'm going to change the number for our neural patterns. Go eight the other way. Go up eight and point and flex two point and patterns like this uh, are really good for our um, neuroplastic keeping our brain healthy. Six seven. Now on the eighth one, I want you to catch your leg. So catch it somewhere. And if it's too hard to grab, use the Dynavans or Pilates ring. Oh, doesn't that feel good? Ten. Catch it, catch it, catch it. Good gene. Breathe it. Yep. And then let that go. All right, the leg is now in front. Now this bottom leg is going to jump over an imaginary yoga block. Point, lift up. Keep your belly pulling in, but soften your neck. Lift up over. It's like a cow jumping over your knee. Now flex and do the same thing. Ten. Keep breathing. You're never holding your breath here. Now we're going to switch and go to the other side. Take the arm like a pillow. And you're going to draw a line up your leg. Now try to stretch it up and flex. Down point. And flex. Now we did eight. That was our little different neural pattern. Six. Seven. Okay, eight the other way. And you can point up and you can flex down. Try to work your range of motion. You also have lymph nodes in the things that are free, so it's really good to pump around the lymph nodes to get your fighter cells kicked in. Breathe in. And you're going to catch your leg, so get ready. You can catch it here on your hamstring, on your calf, or your foot. Breathe and hold. Got a little tension on my arm, but not my neck, to keep a stretch. The bottom arm acts like a little uh, frame, a little bit of support for balance. Now I'm feeling more warmed up, so I can lengthen that knee more or pull it in more. If not, just do the best you can. Yep, big stretch in it. Let this leg in front of the other. Now the bottom leg, you're going to pretend there's a, a moon and you're jumping over it, a pumpkin, a uh, yoga block. Flex your foot. And relax. Now, I want to give you one of two stretches. Um, one is going to be crawl, or you can do bound angle on your back. So either way, you're stretching your inner thigh. So take your knees towards each, uh, sorry, away from each other, but take your big toe. Uh, I was going to cue that too, Karen. You'll be getting water either before or after your stretch. Uh, I wanted to cue that during the lunch, but thank you. Mm -hmm. You're good. Um, Catherine, if you feel an inner thigh stretch, do that. If you don't, lift your hips away from your feet and see if that works more. So it's up to you. I feel it more when I'm uh, hips in line with my knees. I'll show you from the side. So instead of here, here. But you may feel it the other way. So experiment. Now I also feel it better when I rest my head. And there's a decompression in the low back. So, so everybody looks good to me. Just tweak it for you. Ten. Five. Breathe in, and then kind of get back up on your forearms. Good. Take a downward dog, and leave one foot down, and pick up the other foot, and press it out so you're getting one stretch more. Now put one foot down, and take the other one, and press it down. Both heels press down in the stretch. And then rest. 
All right, take a little, um, take a sip. We're gonna do one called the twist. Now we did the stretch, but we did not do the um, movement one. So we're gonna take 10 of these. You see if you can make it a bit, a bit even. So maybe one side's tighter. I definitely have one side that's tighter. So consciously, see if you're even. And if not, give a little, like I'm a little tighter on this side, on my left. Rotate, keep your legs glued. One more each. Nice. And then bring your forearms behind you. Lift up your feet. Now keep your knees bent on this first one, but circle one way and circle the other way. That's the modification, but you might want to keep it because when you lengthen your levers, it's harder. But if you want to take six one way, or sorry, six, then go the other way. Five, four, three, Two, one. Now lower your feet and then you're going to scooch back, rest, take the feet out wider than your hips, and you're probably about shoulder width apart. Drop the inner right knee. Now, if you want to add on, pick up your left ankle and act like a paper weight. Arms go up, good and shed, good and and arms go up. Now try to rest that front hip and breathe into the belly, the diaphragm. Now come up and let your feet get wider than your hips. Drop your inner left knee down, pick up your right ankle, place it on top like a paperweight. Now breathe low in your belly and let your neck be restful, your arms overhead. If it's too hard on your knee, you don't have to use your top foot as the paperweight. You can just put the grab, let gravity do it. doing great. You're going to lie on our side now. I'm going to face you. You can take whatever side's easy, but arm like a pillow. Take your top hand to your top foot. Now, this is a quad stretch, and if your knee's traveling up, try to get it in line with your um, middle hip. Try to open the shoulder too. Ribs pull down a little. Uh, pubic bone pulls up a little. This is really good for knee health and for low back health. Now we're going to go the other. Now your arm is pillow, but you can use a pillow. And then take your top foot, open the shoulder on the top, pull the ribs down, pull the pubic bone up. Breathe low. Sometimes your knee will drop a little bit more. If it's up here, you just kind of ease into it.
Breathe in through your nose if you can. And then let that go and take one leg up into a hamstring stretch. Let's just do a quick circle over here. You could do five ankle rolls. Yeah, you grab your band if you want. Point and flex. This hip flexor is also getting a stretch. And then either your hand or your dime band or your Pilates ring. Take that leg across the midline a little bit. Take it out to the side a little bit. Now take an inhale and relax that leg down. Try to pour it down, but the modification would be to leave it even. And take the other leg up. First, add your toe points and flex and your ankle rolls and put that movement. And then if the lighting ring is really nice or a dyna band, do your hand to be fine with it. Relax, breathe low in your belly, your diaphragm. Breathe through your nose, let your eyes close. That leg goes across the midline a little bit. Toes pull back. Out to the side, you're gonna feel like inner hamstring in a flat. Now, both legs are going to go up and wide like a V. You can even pull your toes back and hold 10. And then we're going to take our legs up on the wall. If you would like to use a yoga uh, block, you can, or a foam roller will do. moment to relax and let your mind go and just think about the breathing or just focus on the breathing. Slowly release the block and lower your spine and then gently come back up to a seated position and just take a moment to bring the hands to the heart. And notice how your body feels after 
taking care of it, strengthening, flexibility, deep breathing, and clearing your mind. Just notice how your vibration is raised. So we're going to have that as our intention that we're going to be the dominant theme of our day in a calm, peaceful, strong way. We set the tone everywhere we go. And if we start to feel a little wobble in our balance, that we can always come back to deep breathing and this feeling to stay closer and connected to that sense of peace that's always inside. With much appreciation. Thank you guys so much. I think you did great. Good job. Thanks so much. Happy Monday. Thank you guys so much. Bye.